It would cost taxpayers millions of dollars and could lead to a court takeover of Tennessee's foster care system. Good evening, everyone. I'm Rory Johnston. And I'm Vicki Yates. A prominent Nashville attorney warns about a class action lawsuit against the Department of Children's Services. This follows a series of stories from our investigative reporter Ben Hall about ongoing problems inside the department. High caseloads, not enough foster homes. DCS's current problems are a lot like those the department faced 20 years ago. That's when they were sued. Now, attorney David Rabin says that could happen again. It is thermonuclear war when you get to that kind of litigation. David Rabin was one of the attorneys involved in a massive class action lawsuit against the Department of Children's Services back in 2000. A children's rights group sued then-Governor Don Sundquist on behalf of all the kids in Tennessee's foster care system. Because the kids are so powerless, they have no constituency, they have no voice. And we were their voice, and we're going to speak up again unless the state steps up and does this. The lawsuit came to be known as Brian A. Brian was a nine-year-old boy from Memphis whose attorneys claimed went without schooling and mental health treatment because DCS had nowhere to place him. The lawsuit led to a court takeover of the Department of Children's Services that lasted until 2019, nearly 20 years after the lawsuit was filed. And they have just slipped right back into the old ways. It's unnecessary. It's wrong. Is there talk about another lawsuit like Brian A? We have had very active discussions with children's uh, rights in New York. Children's Rights led the Brian A. lawsuit, which cited extraordinary turnover of DCS case managers, leading to dangerously high caseloads, ensuring foster kids don't receive necessary services. This individual didn't have a case manager, um, so I didn't know who to go to. Who do, who do I go to if there's no case manager to call? Foster parent um, Kelly Stidham I, told you know, us earlier this year she happen. takes in foster okay. kids, but, I know but often you, cannot get in touch with a case manager. Here, Others told us the same help. thing. You ask questions and, oh, well, that's not the caseworker anymore. Okay, well, who's the new caseworker and when are they going to reach out to us? And you reach out and you hear nothing. Jennifer oh, Snook said one of her foster kids had five different caseworkers in just 18 months. DCS has more than 2,700 budgeted caseworker positions. But in March, 609 of those positions were unfilled. DCS pointed to the pandemic and acknowledged it is experiencing unprecedented turnover in case managers like most other state child welfare agencies and all industries across the country. But the department has admitted some workers have more than 50 cases a month, despite a law that limits the average caseload to 20. We have to acknowledge we have a problem. We are in a crisis. Davidson County Juvenile Court Judge Sheila Calloway is concerned by the number of abused and neglected children taken into custody who sleep in state office buildings because there is no foster home for them. We found more than 40 kids who ran away from the DCS office building at 500 James Robertson Parkway in the last year, all eventually listed as a missing person in these police reports. So how surprised are you to see all of these missing person reports? It's unfortunately, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Back in 2000, the Brian A. lawsuit cited an atmosphere of intimidation exists within DCS, which deters advocacy for children in custody by case managers. A leaked employee survey last year blasted the department's leadership and cited a toxic work environment. Dirt, trash. Last summer, a case worker released this cell phone video showing kids sleeping in a DCS office building. They had been removed from their unsafe home, but DCS had no foster home for them. They were sleeping on the floor. There were no blankets. That's demeaning. We just told them they don't matter. Terry Nelson told us she released the video because people needed to know what was happening. But she was later fired by the department. I definitely thought it could put a target on my back. They're so short-sighted and they don't have memory. There's no institutional memory. All the people who were around when Brian A. was there are gone. Attorney David Rabin is urging DCS and Governor Bill Lee to make changes because discussions about another massive and expensive lawsuit are already happening. The state has an absolute obligation to step forward and make it right for these kids, and they're not doing it. Rabin says a class action lawsuit like this costs taxpayers millions of dollars. 
He says that money would be much better spent on the system right now. Ben Hall, News Channel 5, investigates.